G'day crew, Fraz here again. First of all, I'd just like to thank all the subscribers that have subscribed to the channel so far. We've got around 140, which is fantastic. Uh, wasn't expecting that sort of response and it's really good because it actually gives me some encouragement to keep doing this. Uh, today what I thought I'd do is my top 10 must takes uh, items for the Outback. Obviously there's a lot more things that you should take, mainly for safety. So if you do get into trouble you can be rescued uh, and also survive up until that time that you are rescued. This is number 10. Some people might think it should be number 1. What this is, is a coffee bag. Uh, I'll, show, I'll do a quick rundown of exactly how these work so that I can have a coffee while I'm doing the video at the same time. These are great. They're an Australian company and I think we should obviously support as many Australian companies as we possibly can. As you can see, it's like a big tea bag but it's actually a coffee bag. It's got coffee gr um, grinds in it. Now the way it works is basically just pull it apart drop it in the, uh, in the cup like so open the top pour your water in number nine closely follows number 10. That product there being a jet boil is probably one of the best things I reckon I've ever bought. Highly recommend a jet boil. As good as our stove is, um, you know, this will just boil a cup of water or tea in no time flat. So that's my number nine. Number eight, it would be a good quality torch or headlamp. I really like these torches here. They're called an O-Light. Fully rechargeable, they uh, super super bright for the size, uh, just slip it in your pocket, absolutely fantastic bit of kit, definitely recommend one of those. Number seven is fuel, pretty basic really, make sure you've got enough fuel between your stops, know where your stops are, also make sure that the place that you're going has actually got the fuel that you need. We had a uh, situation where I ignored a sign that said no fuel at the next stop. I thought it was a bit of an outback scam. Kept driving only to find out that it was actually no fuel at that particular place. I found out the hard way so we got stuck there. Number six, this is just my basic toolkit. Uh, it's a good quality toolkit, German made. I only use this for the FJ and it stays in the car permanently. So that's something that I'd highly recommend that you get. It's just a good quality tool set that can do everything you need it to do. Obviously there's some specialty tools, you know, like rattle guns and whatnot, but I find that this you know, pretty much meets all my needs. Combined with the toolkit, you should also consider a jumper pack. This is a lithium jumper pack. So this will jump you know, big diesels, even trucks. Very good unit. Uh, especially good if you're on your own. You haven't got anyone to jump off, and our car being an automatic, so we can't roll start it. My number five is a puncher repair kit. This is the ARB one. This is a great kit because that handle is just so strong and sturdy. I actually used it a couple of times, mainly up in the Vic High Country, uh, but that's another, I think, essential item. Number four, it's a pretty obvious one, and that's tyres. Make sure you've got the right tyres to do the job. You need an off-road tyre. You can't go into the outback with just street tyres on. The ones I use, obviously, as I said in the other video, were Mickey Thompson ATZs. Never had a puncher, never had an issue with those with sidewalls. Obviously they are on the more expensive side and you can get other tyres that will do the job. Number three, now this is a personal choice for us. What this is, is a Garmin InReach Mini. The reason we chose this is we've used satellite phones before. Uh, we hired those. It's, it's expensive to hire them. Uh, they're also real expensive if you want to buy them and they come with an expensive plan. We just figured that they weren't really that practical for what we wanted. The advantage of the Garmin, it's a personal locator beacon. Also our family can track us via an app. We can also text you know, emergency services if we need to, such as the flying doctors or mechanics if we want to get parts sent out. We can't actually talk on it, but we can text backwards and forwards. What I would do is be text my brother, for instance, back in town, and then he could liaise with the mechanic and then try and get some parts out to us if we needed to. 
So yeah, that's one device I'd definitely look into getting yourself if you don't want to go to the expense of, say, a satellite phone. It's got the loop on it there. I actually keep this on me at all times, so it's clipped to my belt. Uh, you never know what's going to happen or where you're going to be. For instance, if you have a bit of an accident in the car and that's flying around loose and you can't find it, you know, that's, that could cause a few issues there. So you really do want to keep that on your person at all times. Number two, first aid kit. This is a very good one. It's an R1, the proper vehicle first aid kit. Uh, if you've got a first aid kit, obviously you need to know how to use it. Make sure that everything inside is in date and um, hopefully you never need to use it. Number one, you should always take a Kelpie dog where you can. Obviously you can't take uh, dogs into national parks. Our boys have to stay at home uh, as much as I'd love to take them. No, I'm only joking. I'll really show you what number one is. Number one, water. You need to take plenty of water with you. We take two of these five litres in the car at all times. Then we've got around another 80 litres in the van at any one time. So, yeah, water's probably the main thing. I've actually had situations where I've been in the outback and I've come across some backpackers touring around in a van. Uh, they had no water whatsoever, barely any food, so we stopped them up and they got back into town. So yeah, don't be like the backpackers and uh, try <laughs> run out of stuff basically. Water need to be rescued by someone like me. Along with water, something else you should consider would be a device like this called a life straw. What this is is a special filter that you can drink pretty much any water out of a puddle, for instance, if you had to, and it'll filter out all the bacteria and the nasties out of it. I haven't had to use it yet, uh, mainly as I said, because we take our own water, but uh, definitely a good idea. Another good idea for number one is just have some of these emergency backcountry meals. Just need to boil a bit of water, or if you had to, you could put cold water in them. Just let it sit for a bit, and you've got an emergency meal. We've actually used these a couple of times, you know, where we've had a long day and really can't be bothered cooking up a full meal. Just chuck some water in these and, uh, yeah, they're pretty nice. That's my top ten. Obviously, there's a lot more to, you know, going away on an outback trip, but I think those ten items are the must-have. If there's anything else that you think that I should take, please put it in the comments below. As I said at the start of the video, I'd really like to thank my subscribers. If anybody else would like to subscribe, I really appreciate that too. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.